Hi, welcome to the Awesome Podcast. I'm Austin. And I'm M. Today we will be talking about the murder of William Desmond Taylor. Our Murder Mystery Monday podcasts will be coming out every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the name. So stay tuned next week for another murder mystery. But now on to William Desmond Taylor. William Desmond Taylor was born in April 1872 in Carlow Island to parents Major Kearns Dean Tanner and his mother Jane O'Brien. William's father was a retired British Army officer and as a teenager Williams failed a test to enter the military which disappointed his retired dad. He was then sent to reform school, also a working ranch in America's Middle West. No, that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Midwest, yeah. But it, e, where is the American Middle West? I don't, I don't, I don't know. What, what does that mean? Like, it's do just... you live in the America Middle West? No, it's, it's like, it's more of an idea. Okay. In 1890, he finally moved to America where he worked as an engineer, a gold miner, and tried to pursue a career in stage acting in New York. In 1901, he married Ethel May Harrison, the daughter of a big-time New York stockbroker. In the time that he was married to Ethel May Harrison, he ran an English antique shop that was set up by his father-in-law. His father-in-law also helped him financially, which allowed the couple to live in upscale lodgement. Two years later, the couple was blessed with a daughter, Ethel Daisy. The Taylor family had a very respectable position in New York until he vanished mysteriously in 1908 after having an affair with a married woman. Oh, no. bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Apparently, he had mental lapses which made him vanish and reappear suddenly in Hollywood as a big-time actor and director. Oh, okay. Right? That's, yeah. Mental <laughs> lapses, quotation marks. He very conveniently had an affair with a married woman and whoops, mental lapse. And how many years later? Four years later, he's just boop. That's... A famous actor and director, right? Yeah, I wish that's... I had a mental lapse like that. <laughs> I was about to say, that's one long mental lapse. <laughs> right? In 1912, he began his career as a silent film actor and later director. And Ethel May Harrison legally sought for a divorce in this year when she suddenly saw her husband um, in a show screening with her daughter. Oh. He briefly left his career to fight in World War I, and just before he was sent to France, the war ended, luckily. And then in 1914 until 1919, which is short before his death, he had a serious relationship with actress Neva Gerber, in quotation marks, because apparently women came and went like a revolving door. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Famous works that you might know from him is Tom Sawyer, Anne of Green Gables, and Huckleberry Finn. Oh, I have not seen any of those movies, but I kind of want to. Me now. neither. Are we going to watch it? Yeah, we got I feel it. Like we should watch yeah, it we need to it. watch okay. these. Do a movie marathon. Okay. okay. Taylor was murdered on the night of February 1st, 1922. Not much is known about the murders, but at 8 p.m., neighbors heard a loud sound and assumed it was that of a car backfiring. Faith Cole McLean was one of the neighbors that heard the sound, and she looked out her window and saw a figure leaving Taylor's bungalow uh, at 8 p.m. A, a human figure? Yes, a human figure. Uh, she described, Male or female? Uh, well, see, that's actually the fun part is, so she said that they were like dressed like an old timey like burglar. It, it, it's also tough because like that's the description I, I saw once and then I also saw a description like that the person was wearing a heavy coat and had like a scarf around their face and like had a hat. Um, but either way, she described it, uh, the way she described it, she speculated that it was a woman kind of dressing and trying to appear as a man. man yeah oh interesting yeah then but she didn't think anything of it she didn't call the police or anything like that she just i guess carried on with her night uh and what yeah like she she heard a car backfire or what she thought was a car backfiring and then uh just 
Oh, and the other thing about the figure. I forgot. Don't, don't let me forget these kind of things. So she saw the figure leaving, and then she saw them turn back around and go back into the house and then leave again. But before they left, they smiled at her and then, like, disappeared in between two buildings. Like, they'd, like, zoomed away. And so, yeah, like, the smiling That's at creepy. her is creepy. Like, when I saw that, I was like, oh, no. Oh, yeah, because that, that means the person who killed William knew that she was looking at them yeah, at that time, like, that's, which is very I, weird. I would, like, never sleep again if, if that happened to me. Like, I think a murderer just might have smiled at me, so I'm just going to stay awake for the rest yeah, of Yeah, and how life. do you know you... Okay, obviously she didn't get murdered, but how no. do you know that person's not going to murder you now because yeah. you're, like, a witness? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, like, uh, it's scary. Um, that's the creepiest thing about this case. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but it gets better. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So that was at 8 p.m. February 1st. Now, mm-hmm. on the 2nd, the morning uh, the morning of the 2nd, uh, his body was discovered when his valet, uh, Henry Peavy, uh, arrived at his home, uh, opened his front door with his own key because he was, uh, you know, did like cooking and all the sort of uh, stuff that rich people pay people to do for them. <laughs> so <laughs> so he, he comes to his house and immediately discovers uh taylor on the ground face up and calls the police and so the police arrive and a scene sort of forms around the the home and okay. uh, a person claiming to be a doctor shows up and says that you know they're there to check the body and they check the body and determine they uh, so the the doctor, the person claiming to be a doctor, checked the body and ruled it to be a stomach hemorrhage and then left. The doctor was never seen again. Uh, and so the police are still like investigating the scene. And I, apparently at some point they start thinking like, maybe this guy was wrong. So they turn the body over. <laughs> they turn the body over and they discover that he had been shot in the back. <laughs> what? But the doctor just said, the supposed doctor just said it was a stomach hemorrhage? Yes. So I don't know how the doctor checked the body and whether or not they were a doctor at all. Uh, I think they might have claimed that they were with uh, the studio that employed Taylor. Uh, Ah, okay. So that could be true or they could just have been lying uh, and wanted to... Cover up the motive on the previous night. Hmm. And... So that basically, so that happened and that kind of kicked off a murder investigation that wasn't really well done. Investigated. Yeah. The, the investigations were were a bit rough, though uh, they did find on Taylor's body $78, which in modern currency is about 1200 They found, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, he had a lot of money on his body. So that kind of... I don't know, makes me think it was more personal because they didn't take the money. Yeah, um, it's not a robbery. Yeah, because uh, he also had his uh, a silver cigarette case, uh, a pen, a knife, a pocket watch, and a locket bearing a photograph of actress Mabel Normand. And, oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, saucy. Very saucy. <laughs> very saucy indeed. Uh, he had... Uh, so his accountant had claimed also that Taylor had shown him a large sum of money previously, but that money was never found or like traced. So that might have been taken. And uh, but like the investigation wasn't really well done. Sarah? Like it was even in that time, it was it was criticized for like them making no progress, and there was a lot of speculation whether or not the studio was kind of making that on purpose because they lost one of their directors and they could have potentially lost an actress or somebody on the staff that worked for them if so you think the studios you think the studio might have been tampering with stuff i mean i think it, it, it it's a good idea i don't know whether or not they did but you could see like it would protect their assets their Um, Because they had already taken a huge hit with just him being dead. And if they potentially lost an actress, uh, then it would have been worse. Though, I don't know if it's the case or not, because I think they did end up losing... Like, some actresses had their careers ruined because of this anyways. So, like... Uh. Yeah, I don't know if if they necessarily stopped it entirely. But they might have just, like, not lose them, but they lost uh, a couple of their stars anyways. Hmm. 
Uh, Maybe they, there was something bigger going on that they were trying to yeah. cover up. Maybe like drug ring. Oh. You know? Yeah. It, it is Hollywood. Yeah. And also I think at the time, like Hollywood was seen more as like, it wasn't like nowadays, if a, like a story about an actor being terrible, like comes out, you're not surprised. But I think in this era, mm. like there were like glitz and glam and like. Any Everyone looked up thing. to them. Yeah. yeah, any yeah, any little thing that was bad would really hurt the business. So I think they would have maybe tried to do anything they could to not let that happen. But in turn, it's very hard to say who the killer was. And there's a list of suspects, and we're going to talk about those. So the, the first suspect that I looked into was Edward Sands. He served as Taylor's valet before uh henry peavy and he ended up being fired well not even really fired basically taylor went on vacation uh, in the summer of 1921 and left basically uh sands to like take care of everything for him and what San sands ended up doing was he like stole a bunch of his stuff and then like pawned it and forged checks and then i think just like left then like when Taylor came back, like his house was missing things and uh, his valet was, was gone. And he ended up moving to Northern California, uh, uh, Sands did, and working a job there. And at some point sent uh, Taylor a letter with like receipts of all like the things he had pawned off and like money. And he had also like uh, sent it to not William Desmond Taylor, but to his birth name, which was something he did not share with people oh, wow. and yeah so like he fa sans found out and like from all the descriptions i could find from sans he he was a criminal potentially mm -hmm. uh because he like he seemed to be conning people he was born in ohio but spoke with a cockney accent and oh. like he was doing a lot of things to like hide who he was i think he like deserted the military mm. and yeah very very interesting backstory to this person and the fun part is so he was living in northern california which i don't know i couldn't find actually where in northern california but uh because his his basically what happened is he was working a job there he quits the day of february 1st 1922 the day of the murder the murder and was never seen but again. he also found no no um, PV, uh, yeah, PV, yeah. Uh, PV okay. found the body. This was, uh, yeah, the, the previous valet. And, uh, yeah. That's very sus. Yeah, so he was never found. And he left the day of the murder. So he could have traveled to Los Angeles, killed him, and then... Now, mind you, like, 1922, we didn't have all the, you know, technology and ways to find people. Yeah. Uh, so, like, he might have just not disappeared, just nobody really tried to look. But yeah, like he was never heard from again. Like he's been dead probably for a long time. Because so he was never questioned on the Never questioned. Well. He was seen as a person of interest, but they never put out a warrant. So oh, like, wow. yeah, part of the reason he was never found could have been because they just didn't care. Hmm. But yeah, so like it, it really sucks because like there's a whole like something missing there because he quit the day of the murder and disappeared. Okay, so the other the other suspect was Henry Peavy, who was the valet at the time for Taylor, and he had who been, found him. Yes, okay. yes, he was the person that found him, had the key, uh, and okay. he was seen as a suspect for much of the case, though he ended up being ruled out by the police. Yes, he previously worked for Millicent Fisher, who was the wife of a famous director, Christy Caban. He, from from what I could tell, he seemed like a good, uh, he seemed like a good valet. Like I couldn't find any really I like issues between the two. Though three days prior to Taylor's death, uh, what happened? Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> three uh, days prior. <laughs> three days prior to the murder, PV was arrested for social vagrancy and charged with being lewd and dissolute. What is social vagrancy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So his court date was scheduled for the morning of the murder. Or, sorry, the morning of the discovery of the body. Uh, okay. So, uh, 
I, th uh, I believe one of the reasons why PV had arrived was because he was going to be picking up Taylor or him and Taylor were going to be going to the courthouse that day because Taylor was going to be serving as some sort of witness um, to speak towards the nature of PV. And uh, so he died. I don't know. I couldn't find anything about what happened to the court date then, but he was suspected for the, the murder and was investigated, which for me personally, I don't see why he would kill the person that would be trying to help him get out of it criminal charge but uh anyways he was cleared but there was a uh hollywood correspondent for a daily news paper and uh named flora bell muir she came to the conclusion that he was the killer uh so despite not being really paid attention to anymore she wanted to like get the story and have it uh mm. so she ended up paying him $10 to go to the cemetery where he was buried. And she had two uh, helpers. Uh, and so Henry Peavy was a black man. And she had the very racist idea from that she had seen in movies that black people were scared of ghosts. And so she had hired two men. Wow. Yes. To dress in, to dress as a ghost and come out in the graveyard, in the cemetery, and say, scream, uh, let me make sure I have the, the quote, uh, I am the ghost of William Desmond Taylor. You murdered me, confess. Uh, now, the thing they, did, they didn't think about was Taylor had a British accent, and the people <laughs> that she had brought in were uh, from uh, Chicago, which is not very similar. <laughs> to a yeah. British accent. So uh, PV then immediately laughed at them and uh, just went on his way. Like, and he yeah. probably wasn't even scared of ghosts or didn't yeah. believe in ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. So he was pretty much, you know, um, not seen as, as a suspect after a while. And after that whole thing, kind of lived his life, moved to San Francisco, and he ended up dying uh, in 1931. And now the third suspect I have is Mary Miles Minter, who was... Child actor? <laughs> yes, the child actress. Uh, she was connected with William Desmond Taylor. They, uh, though their connection has been disputed by some, many have claimed that they had a relationship starting as early as Minter was 17. And uh, then there are others, though, that claim that it was kind of an unrequited love where she had oh. feelings towards him and he would avoid seeing her. Uh, whether or not that's true, it's very difficult to say. But that being said, the she had written letters to Taylor and they came out after the murder and it, it it really did end up hurting her career years previously she had been involved in an affair with james kirkwood who was another prominent director at that time their uh, relationship did end though when she got pregnant and had an abortion now in regards to that there is a, a famous picture that i i found where there's like kirkwood in a car waiting to pick up Minter because they were working on a film together. Uh, obviously, like that was, I think, before the relationship was found out because Minter was 15. Uh, and so, oh. like, yeah, like the, the yeah, the, the picture, I, I think, took a different meaning afterwards. But in the background uh, was, I think, Minter's mother, uh, like mm -hmm. off in the distance. And yeah, so it's, it's a very, very strange image. Ominous. Yeah. Which brings me to her mother, oh. Charlotte Shelby, yes, um, mother of Mary Miles Minter. So th this is more theory than um, actual suspect and investigated, but the theory is that she was the woman dressed as a man that the neighbor saw coming out of the house. Um, and why this is speculated is Shelby wanted to be an actress, but she lacked the talent to be successful, so she was vicariously living through her daughter, Mary, Miles Minter. And um, so Mary started acting as a child, and obviously Shelby wanted to protect her investment because Mary was an investment and basically the money driving force in their family. So um, referring back to Minter becoming pregnant, with James Kirkwood's child. She was a teenager and 
Shelby paid for the abortion and apparently also threatened Kirkwood with a .38 um, after hearing that her daughter was pregnant. Oh. Yes, and then during the making of um, A Cumberland Romance in 1920, Shelby also charged into Mary's dressing room and she found Mary with Monte Blue, who was an actor at the time, and she threatened him with a Smith and Wesson revolver. And when she also ran into the room, these two were in like a romantic embrace, and it obviously went up in a big fight. And then Blue ran out of the room, and Shelby took Mary home. And in the same time, reportedly, Shelby also burst into William Desmond Taylor's office and screamed at him and i quote if i ever catch you hanging around mary again i'll blow your goddamned brains out and she also did this with the same smith and wesson um so she's very intense yeah. um in 1920 as well charlotte showed up to taylor's bungalow one night with the same point thirty eight Smith and Wesson, and it was tucked into her long sleeve, and she demanded to see Mary. But at the time, luckily, Mary wasn't at the bungalow in nineteen twenty. This is two years before the murder. Um, and this was all testified by the chauffeur Eaton. So. Sean C. Eaton. So that was what happened around the time of the murder, the years before. In 1937, Shelby was again questioned about the Taylor murder because she had a different lawsuit with her other daughter, Margaret Fulmore, who testified in the case that I protected her, her mother, against the Taylor murder case. And then this testimony kind of brought up old things and they asked her about the murder but she had an alibi that she was with an actor called Cole Stockdale on the night of the murder with timestamps but what's interesting in this is that Charlotte Shelby paid the actor Cole Stockdale $200 a month for life like every single month so it's interesting like why are you paying someone so much money because it's the 1920s right okay 1930s yeah. by now but why are you paying someone 200 dollars that's month? a lot of money that is a lot of money either my speculation is either mother shelby was the one to pull the trigger or maybe even covering up that her daughter did it yeah and this is the alibi or even got the actor called stockdale to do it true and this is why the payment's happening i don't know yeah. that is my speculation that no yeah because she was very protective of her daughter like with the whole which is threatening with a gun which is so. yeah and which is sad because i mean mary's career died anyway okay another speculation that i have that's also not someone that was investigated is the brother of William Desmond Taylor, his brother Dennis Dean Tanner, kind of followed in his footsteps from a young age, did the whole moving to America. He also um, worked at the same at antique store, ran an antique store. He also deserted his wife, Ada, and his two daughters in 1912, and this was in the year that William Desmond Taylor was again found after deserting his mm. wife with his quotation memory lapse. Um, so his brother really followed in his footsteps. He also worked on some movies that his brother directed. So I oh. don't know if there was maybe a dispute, like he wanted to be as good as his brother was, but never got that spotlight, so decided mm. to end things. Um, this is all very big speculation, yes. but I mean, speculation. you have to Yeah, we are, we are speculating. You have to wonder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then the biggest speculation happened 40 years after the death of William Desmond Taylor. A woman in 1964 was on her deathbed and she was um, 
a newly converted Roman Catholic, so they ask for a priest before they die um, to confess, mm -hmm. and no priest was priest was available, so she just started confessing her sins to the people in the room, and um, she basically said she was once a silent film actress, and she killed the director William Desmond Taylor. And people were like, excuse you, her name was Margaret Gibson and no one could connect Margaret Gibson to William Desmond Taylor. But, but it was later discovered that Margaret Gibson was actually Pat Lewis that had worked with William, William Desmond Taylor at a certain point. Oh. Um, yeah, she was a silent film actress and she was arrested for a few things to do with opium dealing and she was also arrested one time in a prostitution house. She said that she was there to pick up local colour for a film, um, but then she was released because of that. And then she also changed her name at a certain point to Patricia Palmer. So mm -hmm. that's why she's kind of difficult to find. Yeah. And then in November 23rd, no. And then in November 1923, she was arrested again because of blackmail and extortion. Mm -hmm. But the charges were dropped by the district attorney. No, I don't know what the reason is for the drop. But basically, she did work with Taylor before World War One. Um, in a theater when he was still doing stage acting and not directing mm. she was working with him and then uh, and then when she changed her name from Margaret Gibson to Patri Patricia Palmer she worked for Paramount in 1921 so she would have seen William Desmond yeah. there like mm -hmm. they might have not worked directly together but she would have seen him mm -hmm. um, on the lot uh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I hadn't known about that. So, why they also speculate that she might have had something to do with the murder is she might have known him on a more personal level, be level because of their previous work experience. Mm -hmm. And it was um, speculated that William Desmond Taylor might have been bisexual and this would have been something in the 1920s to ruin your career. Yeah. So they think there might have been a group of people involved with blackmailing him and then that kind of mm. turned into his death, yeah. which is sad. Yeah. And that's basically <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, yeah. Could the mysterious man who was seen leaving Taylor's bungalow the night of the murder have been Dennis Dane Tanner, his younger brother? <laughs> The trail on Dennis Dean Tanner ends in 1930. Yeah, I, I don't know. Could yeah, could have been the brother. Um, now you want to hear like my insane speculation? Yes. Okay. Um, so, I, I, I for for a while I've been convinced that Sands. I'm not so sure now, especially with uh, Charlotte Shelby and uh, the brother. Um, but I like looking into when I was looking into the suspects. I thought it was Sands. I thought he might have even, uh, you know, gone back to Los Angeles, killed him uh, in a disguise, and while the person that saw the the figure uh, described it as a woman, uh, it's hard to say because they just said based off the height and build. I don't know how tall Edward Sands was. I couldn't find any of that information, so I might be completely wrong. He could be like seven foot, so it wouldn't make sense. But um, my, my insane speculation is that not only was he that, but he was also the doctor. Oh. Because he could have, because he, he seemed to like to perform, uh, though he was yeah. not an actor, in, in, I don't think, in any way. So maybe um, this was like his role. Yeah, like sort of kind of performance, like seemingly grifting. He could have, like, he could have just gone on and become a totally different person afterwards. Um, changed you know, his name. Especially the weird smile at the neighbor. Which... Yeah. Like would maybe explain like this is a performance he's doing mm -hmm. you know? yeah because even like with with uh charlotte shelby i don't know like if she would have smiled you know like if if she yeah. murdered like she would have been pissed like i don't know if especially for like the the motives too like i think if yeah she, and she would have tried to hide it yeah and so yeah like i don't know i've always kind of leaned towards him uh or even 
anybody else I was thinking. Yeah, no. <laughs> My speculation on the whole thing is actually not one of the suspects, but maybe a group of them. Oh. That there was something more intense going on because the Norman girl, the photo that was found in the locket, what mm-hmm. was her name again? Uh, Mabel Norman. So that so Mabel Norman was said to spend two thousand dollars a month on drugs, and I don't know if maybe because William also helped her go into like the first signs of rehab for celebrities. Um, maybe he was seen as like fighting against the drugs and mm. stuff that was going on in Hollywood at that point and yeah. people didn't like it so he might have pissed off a few people so a few people got involved and then they tried to cover it up by having like the fake doctor mm. and a person dressing weirdly you know yeah. at the crime scene all these things to try and cover up who mm. it really was yeah. and that's why so much focus is also maybe on Charlotte Shelby threatening people with a real revolver and you know being this bombastic personality because it kind of takes away anyone else Mm -hmm. because if you all this bark people who bark like that don't bite like that so it's kind of like yeah is there something else if anything had been found out like it would have really hurt Hollywood even even more than just the murder did like if it yeah. came out about all the drug use and uh, like yeah. just the the un the, the the lifestyle that people didn't want to know or they didn't want people to know, like that would have I think been hurtful to the industry as a whole. And so yeah, it could have been multiple people trying to keep their it covered. Yeah, I think that is very yeah. Or it could just be the brother. I think it's the brother. <laughs> But I think it also kind of speaks to, yeah, like why this is an unsolved case because there's so many potential people and so many potential things and the evidence collecting wasn't like it is now. Right. Like the investigation was terrible and not well done and there could have been interference. Yeah, because a lot of people, I think, also talk about how the studio was at the murder scene as well Mm -hmm. and could have tampered with evidence or put stuff away so maybe Mm -hmm. it is a big hollywood cover-up maybe it's not that's what makes it interesting um but yeah no i I think this will always be an interesting case and i i don't think it'll ever be solved i think you can speculate but i think at the end that's all it will be i don't know if there will ever be do you want to know what the most interesting thing about this case was yes i would love to Realizing that there was something called silent movies not so long ago, that was totally a thing. Yep. Yeah. Classic. Charlie era. Chaplin. Yeah. Yeah. The, Very interesting. The old movies, and we're gonna have to go back and we're gonna have to watch some of his movies. Yes. We're gonna find them. Huckleberry Finn. Yes. It's gonna be great. Thank you for listening to the awesome podcast. I've been Austin. And I think I'm him. <laughs> And we are awesome. (laughs) So stay tuned next week where we will be having another podcast talking about a murder. Uh, You can listen to that on Monday on hopefully whatever podcasting platform you enjoy. Uh, And yeah, we will see you then. And follow us on Twitter because we're totally awesome. Yes. All right. Bye. Bye.